The spike protein is probably one of the most toxic proteins the human body has ever seen. It seems though, and we have really good data from a number of groups, so firstly from Pfizer's own data, and then there have been two independent surveys looking at vaccine injured, both in the US and in Germany. And um, over 80% of the adverse events are neurological, so which is what makes this such a devastating disease. Uh, so these people are neurologically impaired. Um, the commonest is overwhelming severe fatigue and tiredness. Then brain fog. So it, if, uh, it interferes with the ability to think clearly, to do cognitive tasks, to function normally as a human being. So it's these overwhelming fatigue, overwhelming tiredness, brain fog, and then they get a, what's, what's called a peripheral neuropathy in which they develop antibodies against the nerve fibers. So they get terrible shooting pains, paresthesias, numbness in their legs, um, terrible pain, burning pains, and which can be enormously disabling. And that seems to be pretty common. <clears throat> and then obviously we have the myocarditis. Um, they can't hide that. So, you know, we, we know this particularly affects young men who seem for whatever reason to be particularly vulnerable to developing myocarditis. And then there are a whole host of other diseases. Uh, patients get severe ringing in their ears called tinnitus. They get visual problems. Um, they get problems with, with walking and ambulation. Um, so it's, it's, it's a spectrum. In fact, there are over 2,000 published peer-reviewed papers describing different medical conditions associated with the vaccine. But unfortunately, the, the most serious are the neurological, which you know, interfere with people's ability to work, to function normally, um, uh, to, to ambulate. So these are really serious complications. So from what I've heard, some of these symptoms of long COVID, as it's called, are also brain fog and fatigue and so forth. So there's an overlap. And then, of course, there's this potential interactive effect where people that are vaccinated are now more likely to become, you know, to, to get COVID. So it could be a double whammy. I don't know if this is uh, something you've observed or is there is a way to measure it? Or Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. So it's basically related to the load of spike protein you have. The more spike protein you have, your greater your risk of complications, organ failure, and death. So how do you get more, more spike? The more you're vaccinated, the more spike. But of, obviously, if you get COVID and you're already vaccinated, you get spike some more. So basically, the bottom line is don't get vaccinated and um, tr avoid getting COVID if you're vaccinated. And if you are vaccinated to be, I mean, sorry, if you do get COVID to be treated early, because one of the, again, the reasons for early treatment is that if you treat early, you limit the load of spike protein. Mm. So it's the spike protein, the load of spike protein that determines the complications. So you're right, you know, th there was this misinformation that if you had long COVID, you should be vaccinated. But that's the worst thing to do because it further increases your load of spike protein. So if you have long COVID, you absolutely want to avoid being vaccinated. Okay, this is fascinating. Explain to me the body of evidence that exists that shows it's the load of spike protein that's responsible for all of this disease. Okay, so, you know, what does spike pro protein do to the body? So it does a number of horrendous things. The one, the one thing is it's profoundly pro-inflammatory. So it's taken up by what's called phagocytic cells. And these are cells in the brain, cells in the heart, uh, cells throughout the body, and it causes profound inflammation. It's taken up by the cells lining the blood vessels. So, you know, Dr. Cole, who is a really outstanding pathologist who's going to be at our conference, has obviously done pathology specimens. And what he finds is if you look at the endothelial cells, and these are the cells lining the blood vessel, they're absolutely packed with spike protein. Packed. The cells are packed with spike protein. 
So this idea that the spike stays in the arm is false. The spike circulates and it goes to the professional, what they call professional phagocytic cells. So, you know, the microglia cells in the brain and it causes inflammation. Uh, it goes to the endothelial cells and it does some really bad things to the endothelium. So the endothelium lines blood vessels. So what does it do? It causes the blood vessels to constrict and it causes clotting. So it interferes with blood flow. And when you interfere with blood flow, you have what's called infarction. It kills the, the tissue which the blood vessels supply. So we know that people who have been exposed to spike have microinfarcts in their brain if we do high sensitive MRI. So, you know, that's one of the mechanisms. The other is that, um, believe it or not, they manufactured spike to have both two foreign proteins. The one is an amyloid protein and the, the other is a prion protein. So prions are, you know, mad cow disease. They added, when they designed this vaccine, they added a prion to the receptor binding domain of the spike protein. And they did that because it then binds more avidly to the ACE2 receptor. So people who get the vaccine are at much higher risk of getting prion disease, which is mad cow disease. And indeed, there have been many cases of mad cow disease being described. As I said, it has amyloid protein. So what we know about these clots that form is that these are very mysterious clots because they're very fibrinous, they're very resistant to breakdown, and they have amyloid. And this is likely from the amyloid within the spike protein. So, so that's one of the one mechanisms. The other, which is very common in the vaccine injured, is is what's called autoimmunity. So, um, some of the domains in the spike protein look very much like the host's antigens. So it's called molecular mimicry. So what happens is when the host mounts an immune response about against the spike, at the same time it causes antibodies directed against the host's own tissues. So the host is attacking itself. So you can see that this is a complete onslaught. You have the, the spike causing inflammation, the spike causing clotting, the spike causing amyloid and prion disease, and you have the spike causing all of this autoimmune disease. So it's, it's a total onslaught from, from every angle. And that's just the beginning of what spike does. And it seems the more spike you have, the more inflammation you have. So I think that the, the data is, you know, the pathologist never lies because they, they can see the tissue. And, you know, I've seen the slides that, that Dr. Cole shows. And it's astonishing to see the spike protein. It's just packing the endothelial cells, which means it affects the blood vessels. We also know, and this is frightening data from Dr. Patterson, who's looked at circulating white cells. He's found 18 months after long COVID or vaccination, circulating white cells still have spike protein within the cell, 18 months.